If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at w-i-s-t-i-a.com, and Zoho Mail. Well, we are started, and Howard is closing some stuff out. I am closing stuff out, just to make it a little cleaner. Yes. All right. Welcome, 2016. We are in 2016, everybody, and welcome. Hey, it's 2016. What do we do with 2016? Happy New Year, Howard. How, Happy how's New Year, Seth. Year? The New Year's was uh, uneventful and ex- not exciting. Well, that's good. Uneventful. Not exciting is not fun, but uneventful is always good. Very uneventful, so no big deal. Well, that's there. good. Well, so good. Let's jump into the show. Our, let's thank our sponsors, Wistia Flywheel and Zoho Mail. Yes. We love you guys. We'll talk a little bit more about them at the bottom of the, in, dur- during the show. Um, also, go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Support the show and um, give it, throw us a few bucks so we can keep great things coming to you on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. So that'd be awesome. My camera's a little bit low here. Let's fix that now. The, the <laughs> it's there. Ah, whatever. Anyhow. Let's move on. You remember Ashley Madison from last year? Ashley Madison. Oh, uh, yes. What a nice site. Only so, wholesome people go there. Those who are not aware of Ashley Madison, it's pretty much a site to cheat on your spouse. And apparently, despite them getting hacked, four, more, four million more users signed up for it. So if you weren't dumb already for using this site in the first place and a complete schmuck, um, there's 400 more schmucks out there that signed up for it, and they are also idiots. And, you know, and this is an interesting That's stat that. because um, a lot of people have said, you know, if you look at the stats of Ashley Madison, um, I think they said it's something like 97% are male and only 3, uh, three 4% are female. So oh, that in God. itself is not a, uh, a particularly good uh, sign for them. You know, if you had it more balanced 50-50, even if it was more like 60-40, then I would say, well, you know, that's a good... It would, be, it would be pretty even, but uh, to have that kind of imbalance is pretty crazy. There's also lots of signs pointing to, um, a, and this came out as part of the hack, how many fake accounts are there. So I think what this is really pointing out, and the story goes forth to talk about this, is that this is a company that its user base lies. So... You know, I think the site itself is lying, 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 lying. lying. and um, you know what? Who knows what's going to happen with the growth of this site? It's not a site that, um, you know, whether you know, I, I look at it this way: if it's recording revenue growth, then who cares how many users it has? It's like, all right, well, the company's growing and they're getting more revenue, and okay, they got hacked, but people still you know, use it for whatever purpose they want and, uh, you know, onward and upward for Ashley Madison if that's if that's how they want to play. It's disgusting and we'll leave it at that. Exactly. You know, Facebook tests uh, multiple news feeds for different topics on mobile. Is that your article? Or- yeah. Yeah, that is your article because I'm I am looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one's, you know, this is yeah. really interesting because, um, again, Facebook's job is to customize the news feed for your likes. And uh, this sort of gives you the ability, and it's a test, to say, oh, no, I'm in a sports mode. Show me sports stuff. Or, oh, no, I'm looking at movie stuff, as opposed to trying to blend it all together. So, you know what? just let me have a – chronological listing of my posts. Well, there's that. And we all, you know what the funny thing is? I used to be very, very adamant about I wanted that. And then it got to the point where you could still get it. You would do a little, you would log in and it would show you the top stories and you would flip back to chronological. And now that control, I don't even remember where it is because I don't want to say they wore me down, but Mm -hmm. at a certain point I said, you know what? The chronological, not that exciting. I don't need 
every last thing. I kind of sometimes wish I could get to it really simply, but I, I miss things. <laughs> their algorithm. That's my thing. Like my brother-in-law usually posts something funny, and I want to see it or something about my nieces, and so I have to actively go to his page and look for it. Well, remember, you can give uh, on your friends list. You can create those uh, notification friends or that starred list of friends, and that'll oh, yeah, make sure that you don't miss it. You, Howard. Yeah, I don't know how to do oh. that. Oh, uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'll make a little tutorial for you because I think that's a, a positive thing. Because there I are people. I have who, a close friends list that I add people to. And like, so if I went all Howard all the time, it's pretty much a Howard list. Right. Howard well, and puppies because it's Jody and her puppies. Exactly. But um, yeah, there's ways to do it. Facebook likes puppies because I get, I get a daily dose of baby Bel Belgian Malinois every day. Well, I love it. It's great. I'm just saying I so, get a lot of it. You just It's, it's a lot of puppies. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, again, giving us some control, like saying, hey, here's a curated news feed that leans towards a topic. That's, I think that's really great. Uh, it gives us a little bit of an option. And maybe they'll bring back into those controls more of a show me the fire hose, show me everything as it's coming in straight through. Um, I doubt yeah. that. I think they're going to stay with these curated lists. And um, for the most part, I don't hear people complaining about it. I hear us complaining about it because we miss it and we're tech people and we like that. But yeah. Um, I, I think this that Facebook is the tool. This, right. right now, this is just showing up. Okay. Whatever. Right. They don't realize that they missed it. Exactly. So exactly. now the other thing that was really interesting that Facebook has done, um, which fun. I think is a great, great test, is they made their Android app actually crash to see if you were a loyal Facebook user. So here's what they did. It's they so said, rotten. This is this is I, I as as a as a person who used it's, to do lots of usability testing. Trolling their Android users. This is totally trolling their Android users. You nailed it. I used to do usability testing, and we used to create these tests that were designed to make you think you knew what we were testing, but we were testing something completely different. So in this case, it's kind of that same thing. What Facebook was doing was they were trying to figure out how loyal you were. So if the app crashes, will you? reload the app, let it crash again, and keep reloading it, saying, well, maybe it's me. I got to keep doing it. And what they found was, yeah, people kept reloading the app over and over and over again. They could not, they didn't care if the app crashed consistently. They would run it over and time and time and time again. They didn't care. They just wanted their Facebook. Well, but they, they proved it pretty simply. That is good. Now let's, now let's fix the Android app, please. Right now, fix the Android app. Now, and it's interesting. Um, uh, there's other stories going around, uh, not in this story, that are talking about how you know Facebook's trying to make some uh, steps just in case they get into a battle with Google and they get taken out of the Google Play Store. What would they do? How would they handle that? Um, it's it's interesting to see you know how Facebook could deal with things. But you know Facebook's now trying to solve these technology problems that only companies like Facebook or Microsoft or Google or Apple are trying to solve and. We're just seeing what they are, which is kind of amusing because like, we would never see this coming out of Apple. Apple would completely have this hidden. No one would ever see it. In Google, everything's labeled beta anyway, so we're expecting it to crash. Um, <laughs> it's true. Microsoft is going to support everything legacy for the next 20 years because that's just what they do. So this is sort of Facebook's version, which is we're going to put something out there that's broken and see if you care that it's broken because we break stuff all the time. It's, so, such, it's, such, a, it's such a millennial troll. It is totally trolling their users and I love it. I love it so much. Um, I, I just saw this story and I said, oh, we have to absolutely talk about that. Uh, but, well, here's a company that doesn't troll their users and loves their users. Yeah, their, comp their company is Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. Well, we use Wistia here at phillytech.org because it is better and more professional than YouTube and we get data that helps us understand exactly how our content is being consumed. The other thing is Wistia has a ton of free resources on their site to help you get started in making video. They have tutorials on lighting, editing, microphones, and a nice community helping people improve videos. They also have a free version of their service that holds up to 25 videos. So go check them out. Click on the link in our show notes so that they know that we sent you. It's a great product. Learning resources are super duper helpful, and it's a great team of people over there. So go check them out. <laughs> Um, at our link in the show notes, which I believe you should go on the show and click. It's Wistia, W-I-S-T-I-A, Wistia. Absolutely. Now, Netflix versus Amazon in 2015, a tale of two video streaming giants. Do you belong to either of these, Howard? Uh, yes and yes. 
Yeah, I, I just canceled my Netflix subscription. Did you really? It's. Uh, I mean, they have some good shows, but I watch a lot of the procedurals on TV, and I have Amazon Prime, and I was I was there's a whole month I gone by before and I wasn't even using Netflix. Wow. So it, my, my thing with Netflix is I'm one of those people that will come back. But then they they're not losing me. I'm just taking a hiatus. It, and it's interesting because for me, it's I don't want to say it's the opposite, but Amazon hasn't quite found me yet. Like I haven't I've been a Netflix they, they user for so either. long. They haven't me either. I just I have it. So I mean it's right. there. Well, and it's part of my Prime subscription, so I don't have a need to turn it off because I want Prime for all other things Prime. So again, think about these two things. Netflix is everywhere. Every country has it. It's on every single Almost country. every country. Almost. Um, almost every country. I think it's like 80 countries or something like that. It's a big number of countries where Amazon Prime is only in four countries. So that's a big competitive advantage for Netflix. Not even Canada has Amazon Prime. Not even Canada. Canada. Our Canucks up north. Like, but again, the thing about like, Amazon it's almost Prime. It's like light U.S. Um, Amazon, the whole point of Prime is everything from, you know, uh, better shipping, uh, certain pricing events, all kinds of different things with music. Amazon Prime has so much stuff in it. It's almost like the streaming service is a, oh, by the way, you also get streaming videos. And isn't that pretty great? Um, where Netflix, they don't have Chromecast support. It pisses me off. Right. Netflix, it's supported okay. everywhere. It works on your tablet. It works on your phone. It works on any single browser. It works on Apple TV. It works on Roku. It, Netflix is everywhere. You can get it in your car, I think, at this point. It's, I mean, it is seriously I'm not everywhere. sure that's a smart thing to do, though, people, unless you're in No, don't watch Netflix. Netflix. Unless you're in the backseat, don't watch Netflix while you're driving. Bad idea. Um, exactly. House of Cards, it would be a house of cards to drive while watching House of Cards. It would be. I, honestly, and that's the thing. Like, we were watching House of Cards, and I'm in the second season of House of Cards, and I'm like, can I get bored with it? Yeah. Um, it's a lot of the same, same SHIT <laughs> over and over and over again. My wife, and my wife, and the problem is, I might get most of it, but I can't explain most of it to my wife. She's like, what just happened? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Well, this trade deal with this guy and this tariff and this thing, and then he pushes that person in front of something and blah, 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 blah. Sorry, there's some kind of half spoilers there, but you really should watch it if you like it. He also talks to the right. camera, which is very bizarre and takes you out of the scene. Like, I did not like how you talked to me. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, anyway. we even watched Orange is the New Black. You know, and that, that was a good show. And there's a lot of good shit. Marco Polo is supposed to be really good. But we watch. We, we I like Chicago PD. I like Chicago Fire. I like Chicago Med. I like Chicago. Um, uh, not NYPD Blue. That has been on for a while. I like um, um, Law and Order SVU. You know, I like all those mm -hmm. procedurals. They're, they're well, brainless, I, but you know, they're there. And I think what's interesting is if you think about these two services, um, the big change is they're content creators. And three, four years ago, we didn't think of Netflix as a content creator. We thought of them as basically just a streaming service, streaming other people's content. Absolutely. And Amazon, when they started saying, hey, we're going to create our own content, everyone was like, why? Like, just stream content. And now what they're looking at is, you know what? HBO could have a streaming service, and people could just pay for HBO. So and they have they a streaming service. Exactly. So then, that's another thing. I have that, and I have Show Showtime, and I have all these other sh things I can watch. I don't need a Netflix right now. Well, and what here's what's interesting about it: if you are a uh, Comcast cable subscriber, and you had HBO, you started realizing that if you were to quote cut the cord and start assembling all the TV that you watched, you're going to be paying just as much, no matter where you do it. And the interesting thing is, you'll probably get less content. By cutting the cord, you'll pay more, you'll get less content. And Comcast is hoping that people realize that because... Yeah, that's why I haven't completely cut the cord. Yeah. I, I, also, Comcast makes it freaking expensive right. to, to get just internet. Correct. And, I would and, gladly just do just internet. Yeah. But they won't let me... So it's very, very interesting. And us consumers, we lo we're looking at our bills and we're trying to figure things out. Um, and look, Amazon is going to find a place in my home. Um, it would be really nice if Amazon had an app on Apple TV, but they don't. What about Chromecast? Chromecast? Uh, Chromecast? Well, right. But again, now I, have, I don't want to have so many devices hooked up 
to my television. So what I can do with Amazon is I can run it and then airplay it over to the Apple TV. So there's ways of getting it, yeah, getting the content right. on there. I can do it with Chromecast. It's not the best, you know. And then they scream at me for doing it. So right, but um, but again, again, I don't anticipate um, Amazon staying off Apple TV. It doesn't make any sense for them to. Yeah. Um, the I understand that they don't want um. The downside is Amazon doesn't want to pay any of the extra money. So they're going to make it so that you basically watch anything that's in your watch list. Um, otherwise, you know, you can't get purchase new content through it. You just purchase, you just look at what you already have. Where with Netflix, you can add stuff to your queue because just the nature of uh, how Netflix works. Absolutely. Uh, so, so remember Dig? Dig? What's Dig? Exactly. Well, Reddit killed them. Yeah. And Reddit's doing quite well. Reddit is Reddit doing is well. Up 16% to 82 b -b -b billion. Submissions hit 70, 73 million. And comments passed, seven, passed 70, 7, 725 million. I mean, I use Reddit every now and then. I'll pop on and pop off. And there, yes, there's some pretty bad areas of Reddit. Like there is pretty bad parts of New York and Philadelphia. But Reddit's pretty helpful. Yeah, Reddit is. Yeah, I manage to get trolled every once in a while saying, well, if you don't know how to do this, then why are you bothering trying to do it? I'm like, well, you could help me. Right. Stop being a troll. But, you know, whatever. Well, that. I had someone try to help me out with my Nexus 7. And I got back from the um, warranty and I wanted to get uh, Marshmallow back on. And I said, well, if you don't know how to root, you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place. I'm like, I'm asking you for instructions on how to root. Right. So obviously I'm going to do it regardless. You can either help me or not help me. So there's yeah. trolls on Reddit, but there's a lot of page views. There's trolls everywhere. And you know what? Reddit is interesting because they are they have been a grow up slow company. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're taking their time. They're not rushing into things. They're not changing their service in bizarre ways. They've dealt with some bumps um along the road. a lot of money for for you know victims of the earthquake in Nepal, you know. Yep. They raised $772,000 for teachers through Reddit Gifts, $72,000 for sick children through Extra Life. So they do. there's a lot of good things that go on on Reddit, but there are some schmucks. Yep. But that's and the web. That's, that's life. That's the web. Five down the street, you're bumping up five of them. And the, the, one, the one thing about this story, they did bury the lead because Reddit now has a capital R. It does. Very exciting. They're, when, they've grown when did up. that happen? Apparently this year. <laughs> wow. Long Reddit. Long live Reddit. Yep. So oh, our next did, story. Did, did at the very end, Reddit, lowercase is dead. Long live Reddit. Right. Uh, that, that's really buried. buried that is buried. very buried. Very buried. So anyway, moving along. Twitter revives Polita Politatwoops. What, what he said. Politatwoops. Which I think is kind of kind of trolling the, the politicians, but I think it's kind of awesome. I mean, well, there's other you know, services that were doing it, like they had those wiki. You know, when people change a wiki, they get called out for it. Yep. But the fact that Twitter corporate is saying "gotcha," is, yeah, it's effing awesome. That's totally a Jack Dorsey. It's totally it would never happen without Jack. Well, and I think what's interesting is they had shut them down. And now what they basically said is, hey, we're going to let them come back up. They're not back up yet, but they're basically saying, yes, you can keep doing this. We're going to figure this out. Um, there's no specific dates as to when they relaunch, but um, you know, it is a bit about transparency. Um, most tweets that get edited are edited for typos or small things. Yeah, that's um, why I think are, 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 what I'll do is I will, I mean, latest, latest when I posted Happy New Year, Right. Happy, 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 uh, happy New Year, and it's a Happy New Year. So I'm like, ah, delete, repost. Right. Exactly. Those kinds of things, you know, they don't make any news, and you know, most people are perfectly content letting those uh, be there. But again, for politicians, that you know, they go out and they tweet things, and it's you know, yeah, even these idiots with real. I mean, other than Trump, right? He, he's, yeah, whatever. You know, uh, there's that. There's that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> oh god, that jumps a shark. Um, but do you think politicians would watch what they say? Uh, no, they won't. Uh, you know what? I think something like this, or in Trump's case, who knows? I think something like this. 
I would have preferred that Twitter just stay out of it and just simply say, look, this is the way our service works. People can do X, Y, and Z. Um, and maybe had say say things like, we're going to, anybody that's trying to access this fire hose or isn't looking at specific accounts, um, you know, they may have done it and said, hey, here's a way that you can do it so that anybody can do it and it's not singling out a particular uh, site. Maybe they force this uh, site to purchase better data feeds of the Twitter fire hose. Maybe they have to purchase it as opposed to just saying, look, you're going to scrape it from what's publicly available. Um, however they came to this deal, they have come to this deal. I have a feeling that a deal was made, which is why they're making an announcement about it mm -hmm. and not just l letting Polit or a Polit uh turn itself back on. Um, the fact that they said, hey, they can come back, but they haven't, uh, but Politwoop hasn't turned itself back on, that says to me that a deal was made and now Politwoop is, is being um, put in the position of either come back up and pay Twitter or stay shuttered. And if they stay shuttered, then Twitter could say, oh, look, we let you come back up and you didn't come back up. What's up? Yeah, I think it's a little bit, it's definitely business related, but I also think yep. it's a little Jack saying, that's a good site. Yep, come on back. Come on back, you know, you know, that was a good use. Now pay us some money, but that was a good use. Speaking of paying money, I and think we should talk money. about our one, our next sponsor, which is Flywheel. Yeah, what is Flywheel? Flywheel? Flywheel, it's managed WordPress hosting, but it's built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it really simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with its easy-to-use dashboard that they built from the ground up specifically for modern web developers. They do nightly backups, they have blazing fast load times, WordPress-specific security, and a great support team of WordPress developers. They help thousands of designers across the country and the world launch projects every single day. So what I want you to do is go to the link in our show notes, which is socl.bz slash flywheel and sign up today. That's socl.bz slash flywheel. Sign up, let them know that we sent you, and uh, give them a try. The funny, part, the funny thing about that complicated short URL, it's simpler than their short URL that it goes to. So. <laughs> So you're welcome, everybody. That's a shorter URL. And yeah, moving along. <laughs> so Snapchat. I have gotten yeah. I like Snap like Snapchat for the most part as I bite my lip. Um I think there's a place for it in marketing. I think there's a place for it where things disappear after 24 hours unless you download it and post it elsewhere. I like it. I still think that because I'm a 34 go and a half year old going on 35. I don't quite get it as much as the 23-year-old, which is good, which the link in the show notes shows, you know, they give a little bit of a more of a rundown on it. I'm still finding crap out. Like, oh, if I hold my fingers two ways, like this and this and this, and then turn it this way and like this, it is mystery me navigation. I just shake the whole camera. It's mystery me navigation. And it's not intuitive, but it's fun. And I'm going to get Howard on there just so I can, just, just so I can send him to you know, Snapchats all day. Oh, good. No, but um, fine. I mean, it's just fine. I can go, Howard! I, I think what's interesting to me, and we were talking about this in the uh, show prep, um, Snapchat, for me, feels like Foursquare. Yeah. And I got very heavy into Foursquare, and I was checking in obsessed. everywhere. Hmm? You were obsessed. I loved it. I used it all the time. Um, I, I liked being the mayor of different things, and then they took the mayorships away. They, there were certain things about Foursquare that sort of the community of Foursquare really loved it, earning the points, getting the badges, doing all kinds of stuff like that. And now I think back on that, and I go, wow, what was the lasting value of that work? And the lasting value was really none. It's yeah, something where... It's still there. It's still there, but... It's, the lasting value isn't there. Now, Snapchat makes no qualms about it, saying there is no lasting value. You're going to put stuff up, and it's going to disappear. And the value is you can be very honest and transparent because you're not worried about it coming back to haunt you, so to speak. Um, but I treat it the same thing as every, everything else. You know, I, one thing I do is, I mean, I may not think about it per se as much. I might say, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go to this place now. Wow, your library card. My last one of my recent ones was, wow, your library card's they expire with a thunk. <laughs> that was yeah. it. It was a thought. It might, that, I might have actually posted it on Instagram because I thought that was an interesting fact. 
that if you don't use your library card, it expires. You need to go there and give them your phone number and they reinstate it. Didn't know that. Tip for the day. Um, but Snapchat was easier than Instagram. Instagram, then you got to pick a filter and you go, oh, you got to type a caption. Right. Well, and the, snap. Right. And the question is, um, they're, because of what you describe as the mystery meet navigation, yeah. um, their goal isn't to get everybody to use it. Their goal is to keep it kind of this private little thing, the user's goal, that is. Mm -hmm. Snapchat, on the other hand, is trying to solve some business problems. And those business problems Instagram. do not want... Instagram. They want to be Instagram. They want to beat yeah. them. So I have a feeling that they're positioning themselves for a large acquisition, and they're trying to keep relevance long enough so that the value of their company goes up high enough so they can be purchased by someone and they can all have this wonderful exit and have that timed with just the moment that the user growth peaks before it stagnates and starts going down. Because all of these services, it's a you know, it's a it's an ephemeral service as it is. And I have a feeling that five years from now there will be a second replacement of it. Are you gonna Snapchat this conversation right I now? I was going to, but I'm not going to. So you can help me <laughs> out on it. No, no, we're dead silent. All right, move along. Uh, this new app lets you, lets you see who likes Instagram pics the most. I like that. Tell me about it, Howard. Yeah. It's that was your post. Yeah, this is you know this is one of those things. It's a it's a uh, thing called Best Buddies. But what it effectively oh. does is it says who are the people that are the the top people who typically like your stuff. So if you're looking for you know, let's say you're a brand and there are people who are, you know, like when you get a hundred likes on a photo, um, you can't really remember photo to photo who liked your photos. And what this does is it goes through and it says, look, here are the people that are consistently engaged, commenting, liking your stuff. They're really looking at it as a, it's kind of like getting some data out of your data that's there, getting a different look at it. Out, out. Otherwise you might think, hmm? Data out data, exactly. I concur. So um, I think this is, uh, this is something that is good, for, especially if you were trying to get some marketing measurement out of what is happening on Instagram. If you figure out that, you know, there is one person who likes everything that you do and you haven't reached out to them as a potential customer or an ambassador or something that says, hey, we're going to let you graduate, well, you might be missing a great opportunity. You also might find that there's uh, some people that are, not necessarily in your top 10, but are a little bit further down that you may not notice that deserve some extra engagement. So you might be really... Or a spammer who's really spamming you. You should probably block them. Exactly. So again, it's those yeah. kinds of things where it's extra data about what you're doing on Instagram. Uh, great little free service. Chances are it will be free for a certain amount of time and then they'll figure out how to charge you for it. Um, probably it will be you can run the test a certain number of times like if you want to do it ongoing you have to pay for it but if you just want to run this scan um once no problem it's sort of like free to run it once otherwise you know pay us yeah. later so they'll figure out a way to make some money from it but uh until then give it a give it a try yes i'm going there right now um anyhow next one the center you know, a lot of people use twitter in unconventional ways one guy wrote a novel using twitter not the most, I yeah, I don't agree with that necessarily, but he did the whole dialogue via Twitter, and it was interesting. Um, the center is remem remembers the tw 2015 mass shootings one tweet at a time, which is sad because there's a nut load of them. There are a I'm lot of them. A lot of mass shootings. Now, mass shootings, anything over four, pe anything over four people killed or yeah. shot or killed, something like that. So a mass shooting, that, you know. I mean, it's terrible when one person is shot and killed. But four plus is what equals the mass shooting. Yeah, and this is something where yeah, I don't want to say I like. I think it's a great idea. I think it's sad that there are so many that Constantly. really the the measurement uh, the measuring unit is a hundred and forty character tweet. That's sad. That's a lot of unfortunate activity that really the only way to capture it in something like that is these tweets because it's happening so frequently. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, um, I, And Bravo, is regardless of what you think, I don't really care. You can stop listening to us, but Bravo to Obama for, you know, using his powers to kind of tie up some loopholes. So thank you. Thank you very much. 
As, as they like to say on the interwebs, thanks, Obama. Thanks, <laughs> Obama. Hey, let's thank Zoho Mail. Thanks, Zoho Mail. We want to thank our next sponsor, Zoho Mail. It is professional email designed for your business with uh, business class features and security, as well as the convenience of web and mobile. So learn about Zoho Mail and sign up for a free ad-free account for up to 10 users by clicking on the link in our show notes. So Seth, you have a pick. Before I have a pick, Howard, why are you not liking my posts on Instagram? Why am I not? I, I don't why go on Why are you Instagram not in my top often. 10, sir? I'm sorry. I, you know what the funny thing is? I dip into Instagram. Uh, I, used to, I used to be very into it, and I would look at it several times a day. And I just, I don't want to say I uh, stopped, but I just don't use it as much anymore. Yeah. It, it's something where it's like, okay, well, every, from time to time, I will scroll through and look at some photos and go, oh, that's nice. I don't want to say that the number of ads got me to go away because I don't think that those two things were uh like, i don't think cool, one honestly, some of them yeah i don't mind the ads the funny thing is i find myself looking at the ads going hey this is a good ad i'm going to check this out um for my <laughs> it's my funny. own personal usage yeah uh i just find that i'm not uh i'm not on it as much as i used to uh for lack of a term i i'm busy i got a lot of work to do so i don't i don't have a lot of uh instagrammy time exactly but apparently it's someone named at their boob likes me okay then but oh, I, I've actually looked them up, and they're actually a um, mommy blogger team that <laughs> picked a funny handle. Nice. And they explain it on the website why they're called Third Boob. Got it. But Third Boob, I'm a guy. It's funny. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, talk, speaking of Donald Trump, this, there's a Chrome extension out there, which I think is kind of stupid because you should be educated on how uneducated he is. But you can block... Every mention of him on 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 the web using this Chrome extension in Chrome. Nice. I think it's stupid because it's he's actually good for a good laugh and a and a few you know scared shivers. But I mean, what an idiot! I'm sorry if you got a Trump lover, get off the podcast. I don't want you to listen to our podcast. Like seriously, like uh. Anyhow, bravo to Obama for gun control. And yeah. if you're a Trumper, get out of here. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm alienating our user base. Anyhow. It's an extension. It's neat what you can do with Chrome. It blocks Donald Trump. And hopefully it can block... It would be even funnier, neater, if you can actually block him from the the, the election completely. <laughs> it, literally. Exactly. Good. Well, and, and you know... And Ted Cruz. I'm a big fan of, you know, letting the tools that you use on your computer give you the control that you want. Mm -hmm. So this is a tool, and, you know, I think this is a good pick of someone who says, look, I'm tired of hearing about Trump. I'm just going to block it. And I think it's much more useful for all your friends who you like who happen to be talking about it when you're just tired of it that you can block all of that yeah. and not feel bad about your friends that are bringing it up. Thank when you, they, Howard, for not being being one of those friends that doesn't do that. Thank I, you. You know what? I try... I, you, Here's the thing. I have a rule about social media, which is I don't get political on it. And I actually posted one thing that was a fact checking with Ted Cruz that NPR did that talked about all the different kinds of things where he was wrong about so many different facts. And I wasn't doing it as a anti Republican thing. I was doing it because it was just so amusing how much wrongness the science was. <laughs> and it was like, wow, he has sliced and diced everything. And it's it's so very wrong that I was like, whatever. And I think I clicked the, you know, I clicked the share button. And oh my God, the people that came out to hate me, to prove me wrong, to show me why climate change wasn't real. That was a, you know, that all I these know, other, it's, like, it's it was. Crazy. I just write, a lot of times I just took, go this, dot, dot, dot. And that right. post for itself. And I'm like, eh, whatever. Well, and I, I usually don't. I make it a point to say, hey, this is a political post. This is not going to be in my feed. Yeah. Um, I might like a post, but I certainly don't share it. And this one I shared, hey, I, 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 I'm human. I'm, I made that. And oh my God, it was such a reminder that I, that is not my story on social media. That is just not how I play it. It's not, it's, I'm not a, um, I'm not someone who gets really satisfaction about changing people's mind politically. That's not how I get satisfaction. I tend to like say, look, that's what you believe. Great. Enjoy. 
Um, what is video blocks? All right, video blocks. I make video content, and often in video content, you have your primary content. Uh, call it your direct address, your screen captures, your main footage. But then there's all of this stuff that you need that is, uh, whether it's B-roll or some backgrounds or title templates, all kinds of stuff that you need that if you wanted, let's say, a scene of Philadelphia that's like aerial footage, well, you could hire a helicopter, you could get drone footage and get all the right commercial licensing, or you could go to video blocks and type in the word Philadelphia and you'll see all kinds, like Philadelphia, and you'll see all kinds of aerial footage of Philadelphia or different kinds of things. They've got tons and tons and tons of footage. Um, their account, it's $99 per year for their unlimited marketplace. So that means you just download these video clips and use them. Uh, it's like royalty-free, instead of images, it's royalty-free video um, that you can use in your productions. Um, it's great. My little link there, it, I will tell you, my little link there is off my little personal video blocks account because I subscribe to video blocks annually. It gets me a free month of service. So if you click on it, you can help me. Oh, yeah, help Howard content. out, people. Help, help me out. Help him out. Help, help a man out. But it also gets you a free month of, I believe it gets you a free month of service as well if you click on it. So it's 99 bucks for the year. You click on the link. I think you either get $20 off or a free month of service. I forget what the offer code uh, does for you, but it does get you something. Um, so check it out. And the nice thing is they have a free trial, I believe, so that if you sign up and you don't like it after 30 days, you can get rid of it. Um, I also think that if you sign up for it, uh, you get some, like, in their free trial, you can download uh, a certain number each day. Um, so if you have a, a project you're working on and you want to get grab some B-roll without paying any money, you give it a, you know, check it out. Check out Video Blocks. I like it. Um, I pay for it. I like it. I use it. It gets used in my productions. Um, often little elements, little touches and tastes of things that just make the process a little bit better. Um, if you've seen my Ask Howard videos, they usually have a little bit of B-roll footage in there that you look at and you go, oh, that's nice. It gives it a higher level of uh, production quality. Bravo, Howard. Bravo. Bravo. So. Anyhow, awesome. That shameless plug. Go to facebook.com slash that Seth and like <laughs> my page, will you? I'm doing an experiment. I'm seeing what kind of reach I can get on a personal branding page. My mom already screamed at me for calling myself an entrepreneur. She's like, you're an entrepreneur. That's very presumptuous of you. So I'm now called a business person. Got it. I, I was very impressed to actually give you the option of an entrepreneur to call yourself a business person, which I am. So there you go, Mom. I am listening to you. Um, so, Howard, you're obligated to hit like. I think I already did. Well, then you're off the hook. Everyone else, go. I, uh, That's Seth. I think I was your first. Aw. You were my first. Isn't that sweet? Aw. Anyhow, we want to hear from you. Email us at info at phillytech.org. Tweet us at phillytech underscore org. Call us at 908-758-3248. It's a very lonely phone number because no one ever uses it. And leave us a voicemail. Yeah. Howard, where yeah. people find the almighty Howard Yermish? Oh, go to howardyermish.com and check me out there or say hello to me on Twitter at H Yermish, H-Y-E-R-M-I-S-H. Say hello to me there and I'll say hello back. Awesome. And maybe talk to you. Guy, he does not bite. I do not. All right, guys. Have a wonderful 2016. We will be back in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. So we're bi-weekly. Yeah. Are we and bi-weekly now? Jody says hello. She's dealing with, I think, seven or eight puppies, puppies. That, are, that Jewel had. So congratulations to puppies. Jewel. Uh, follow her online, Jody Reigns or Sunswept. And you'll see a lot of puppy pictures. Very cute. Excellent. But if you make, uh, warn you, you will get inundated with very cute puppies constantly. But they're cute, so it's worth it. All right, Howard. I'll see you on the flip side. Sounds good. Take care. All right. Bye bye.